So really, uh, the Army and the military is a unique situation, unique environment. And early on, actually between 1900 and 1940, it was identified that uh, military recruits were at greater risk for acquiring meningococcal disease. So there were efforts made by a variety of individuals to try and make a vaccine, and it just didn't happen. Um, between 1940 and 1960, um, the problem was starting to get managed by some newer antibiotics. Uh, unfortunately, uh, by 1963, it was identified in the U.S. that these antibiotics weren't working. The organism was becoming antibiotic resistant. So there was renewed efforts to look at developing a vaccine. Uh, so that occurred in the late 1960s, early 1970s, and Connaught Laboratories was part of that process and actually licensed the very first meningococcal polysaccharide vaccine in 1974 to be used by the military. It was the meningococcal C vaccine. Uh, then a year later in 1975, we also licensed uh, a, a bivalent uh, polysaccharide vaccine, an A and a C serogroup vaccine. And that led to significant declines in, uh, middle, uh, in uh, meningococcal disease in the military. Uh, in 1981, we actually added two additional serogroups, uh, Y and W135. And by introducing that quadrivalent meningococcal polysaccharide vaccine, in 1981. Between 1972 and 1989, uh, disease in the military in the United States declined by 95 percent. So significant contribution for uh, public health and for the safety of our, our recruits. Um, the Voices of Meningitis uh, program was really grew out of um, many relationships we've had with a variety of different advocacy groups, parent groups, um, also healthcare providers and healthcare professionals. And its importance is, and significance is that it helps educate the population, um, that's the public, parents, teenagers, children, um, and healthcare providers of the significance of meningococcal disease and the fact that there is a vaccine available to prevent it. Uh, Voices of Meningitis actually put a, a voice to those who have actually been victims of meningitis, whether they were a survivor or unfortunately if there were, was a death involved to meningitis. So I think a lot of these people who participate in the Voices of Meningitis program that are from the general public get a, a great sense of reward that they're not going to let this happen again to anyone else. Well, I think uh, I take great pride in all that we've been able to do within the immunization community, especially when you've had the opportunity to meet um, victims of, of meningococcal disease and, and their families. Uh, they have great courage, and it gives you even greater resolve to want to help them and make sure that, again, no one ever has to uh, suffer or die from meningococcal disease if you can at least prevent it or at least make them aware of the disease and the availability of a very effective vaccine.